and hello YouTube, this is just Mam Smart and I'm going to another brand new video for tutorials to Jess. In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at Adobe Premiere Pro and how to blur out faces and blur out the background of a subject or a person talking. And if you have extraneous things in the back, I want to blur those things out. Sort of like a DSLR camera, then here's how to do it. Actually, very easy and a new feature in uh, the latest version of Premiere Pro is tracking masks which makes it very easy to create this effect so first i'm going to show you how to uh blur out faces and moving faces and whatnot because it's a lot easier and it's a lot quicker to show but essentially it's the same thing now you drag your clip into the timeline here i have a 10 second clip here from my latest vlog well not my latest vlog but second latest vlog on my channel on my main channel and essentially what i do is go to effects and you have two options. You can either use the Gaussian blur uh, effect, which is right here, which will basically blur out uh, something, or you can use the mosaic uh, effect here, which is sort of like the blocky pixelated one. Either or, I prefer to use the Gaussian blur, but if you like pixelated blocky look, then you can definitely use the mosaic one as well. Both of them work exactly the same. The difference is for Gaussian Blur, you'll have to adjust the blurity, and for Mosaic, you have to adjust the vertical and horizontal blocks. But essentially, both are uh, essentially the same. They, they serve the same purpose. So, all you're gonna do is drag your Gaussian Blur on top of your video layer like that, and then you should see the effects panel pop up here. If your effects panel does not pop up, click Windows at the top, and look for Effect Controls. Make sure that's checkmarked, and you should see it pop up. Now in your effect controls, you notice that the blurriness is at zero. If we were to bump this up, it puts a blur on the entire video layer. We don't want that. So go ahead and keep it at zero for now. And what you're going to do is grab this little ellipse tool right here. And this will pop up a circle right here that you can move around. Now depending on the size of the face that you're trying to cover, you can uh, resize this ellipse with the uh, with little anchors on the sides here, on the left and right, and top and bottom. And you can move this around as you'd like and resize this to your preference. And once you have it, I'm just going to keep it like that. You can perfect it if you want. But essentially, after that, you can up the blurriness to, let's do 25 perhaps. And if you want more, maybe we'll go something like 66. Or, hmm, that's still a bit visible. Let's just go 100. There you go, 100. And now, what you'll notice is that we have an ellipse here, or a blurred ellipse, but it doesn't really move with the face. You can see that our face is moving, but the ellipse isn't moving. So how do you track the mask here? Very, very easy. Make sure that you're doing this uh, at the start of your video, wh where the face first comes into your shot. That way you can just track it by playing the entire video forward. So you press this little play button here, and this will basically track the mask throughout the video clip here, and it will make keyframes. As you see right here, there's a white little keyframes being made. It automatically does this for you, where it moves the mask where it's supposed to be, creates keyframes here. So at each frame of your video, the mask is at its proper position. Now, the video that I have here is a 10 second clip, but 60 frames. So it's gonna have to go through 600 frames. You have to wait till it finishes. So I'm just gonna let it go through at least maybe one second or one and a half seconds and I'll show you the result. All right, so we have one and a half second of this little piece of clip rendered through. And as you can see here, keyframes are being made here. In fact, if we zoom into these keyframes, you'll see that we have a keyframe made for each of these frames. And that's sort of what it's doing. Now you do have other options here to backtrack. And for example, if you're if the, if the face that you're trying to hide uh, starts moving behind something, then you'll probably have to move your mask and then backtrack and then track forward again because the mask will basically lose its tracking if the face goes behind something or behind someone else. Uh, that's essentially how you do it. If we were to go ahead and look now, we can see as we scrub through this, the mask is following uh, the face here and it makes it look a lot better and a lot more accurate as well. Now, similarly, you can do this with blurring the background. We're going to go ahead and delete this mask right here. So go ahead and press backspace. Now, delete the mask. And we're going to go bring this blurriness back down to zero. If you want to blur the background as in a DSLR camera does when it focuses on the subject, the background gets a little blurred. What we can do is use our free select tool here. Instead of using the ellipse or the 
uh, rectangular polygon tool we're gonna use free select here and what we're gonna do is instead of choosing fit we're gonna zoom into about 120 150 200 percent or so we're gonna grab our hand tool and well actually we can't grab our hand tool. we have to use the we have to use the little scroll bars here and what you're gonna do is just is just draw a mask around uh, the subject here and it doesn't have to be super accurate but the more accurate it is the better obviously so you can either take your time with it or you can just do a quick rough sketch like I am but as long as you're somewhat accurate you should be okay so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this real quick and I'll be back all right so at the bottom of the other side of your little mask that you've made here all you gotta do is just uh, click somewhere near it or click on top of it like so well it's kind of complicated there we go sort of connected like that you don't need to click on top of the point but click near it and it'll automatically connect like that and once you've done that we can go back to fit and here we can go ahead and press inverted here since we want to select the background and not around the mask we're going to select everything outside of our mask so after you've clicked inverted here on your mask make sure it's the same make sure it's just you're inverting the correct mask um, and then you can go ahead and up the blurriness here and as you can see the more we blur this the background gets blurred, but our subject doesn't get blurred. That's because it's inverted. So you can put something like maybe 50 or 60. I think 50 looks fine. And you can notice the difference if you deactivate the effect or activate it. As you can see, there is a big difference. And then once again, you have to do tracking so that the mask gets tracked. Once again, I'm going to go maybe do a second or a second half of this. I think this one takes a bit longer because the mask is a lot bigger. But I'll be back once I have a, a good second or a second and a half to show you guys. Alright, so once again, we have one and a half seconds here rendered through. So if we were to scrub through this, as you can see, the mask is basically following the uh, tracking position of our subject here and only blurring the background. And you know, as we move, the mask is moving as well. And that's the point of these keyframes that are pre-created here so that the mask stays accurate. And that's kind of how you blur faces and blur the backgrounds of any video pieces that you want to blur out. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully you understand how to do this now. Any questions, confusions, comments, leave it in the comment box down below. I'll definitely down there answering any questions you have, you run into any problems. I also have plenty of other Adobe Premiere Pro tutorials on the channel, so definitely subscribe if you haven't yet. Lots of other software tutorials as well on Photoshop, GIMP, Audacity, lots of editing stuff. So if you're interested, go ahead and leave a subscribe and leave a like on the video if you found it helpful. If you did find it helpful and you found some of my other videos helpful, you can always donate $8 to my Patreon page. Anything as low as that is always very helpful and very much appreciated. All you gotta do is click the card in the top right hand corner of the screen and it'll bring you to the page. Other than that, I also have a gaming channel, vlogging channel, music channel, and vice channel. If you wanna check those out, links in the description as well as on the end card. And with that, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching as always. And this is GS Mammoth Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.